Good morning and uh, welcome to the month of February. This is the month that we celebrate uh, black people around the world. Uh, I know that it is uh, mainly an American celebration, but Black History Month should not be just in America, it should be all around the world because I don't believe there's any place on the face of the globe that you don't have black people. I, I have to tell you a story that really surprises me. One time I traveled to China and I was with my business partners and we went to this very big Chinese market where they sell and trade and they were trying to uh, teach me how to sign up with a vendor and to allow them to send things to America or to Africa for me to sell. And uh, we were there and there came this black man into the next uh, uh, vendor. And he was speaking Chinese like he was born in China. Uh, and I kept waiting to hear something from my partners. And uh, I looked at them, I said, man, he is speaking Chinese. And the guy said, yes, his Chinese is better than mine. And uh, so even in China, I found black people over there. Uh, so all around the world, we have uh, the, these beautiful people that are created in the image of God who are influencing things, not just in their neighborhood, but around the world. I think we think of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King when we think of a world-renowned black person. But he's not the only world-renowned black person. During this month, we're going to bring you uh, some of the black people that have influenced the world, not just uh, as preachers and political leaders, but as doctors, as engineers, as inventors all over, and of course, uh, as athletes all around the world. So. I want to wish you happy, happy Black History Month. Let us promote, let us celebrate, and let us give God the glory that he has created us in his image and we are influencing the world. So uh, today I want to uh, bring us to uh, another part of our attributes of God the attributes of God. Let me remind you that we're not just saying God is just parts when we look at him, but he is a whole. But these are the things that he reveals about himself. These are the things that we experience about him. And we are trying to get an understanding of this. It's going to take us a few weeks to uh, finish this. We may even come back as a body worshiping together, and we're still doing the attributes of God. And I don't want you to feel like uh, you are in a systematic theology class, but sometimes it may sound like that, but I think it's very important for us to be knowledgeable about God, to know our God, because you cannot trust him more than you know him. You cannot trust him more than you know him. The more you know him, the more you trust him. The more you know him, the more you rely upon him. The more you know him, the more you depend upon him. The more you know him, the more you want to fellowship with him. So I want to uh, remind us of what we have done. We have done the transcendency of God, that God is above all, that God is removed from us, God is far from us, God is higher than us, God is greater than us, God is mightier than us, and uh, we need to always be reminded of that. We have also dealt with the imminency of God. God is imminent. Even though he is transcendent, he is above all, he is also with us. He is with us. We signify that by reminding us of the name of Jesus. He shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
God is far from us, but God is closer to us than we even know or we can imagine. Then we talk about the three omnis of God, that God is omnipotent, that he is all-powerful, and therefore we can totally rely upon him. He is an omnipotent God. We also talk about the fact that he is omniscient or is omniscience. He is all-knowing. He knows everything, and because he knows everything, he knows your name, and he knows what you're going through. Then we talk about the fact that God is also omnipresent. God is present everywhere at the same time. So there is nowhere you can go. You go in the sky, you are on the plane, you go in the waters, you're swimming, wherever you are. You go nowhere that you can hide from God. Where can I hide from your spirit? Nowhere. Because wherever you are, God is there. That is a very comforting uh, message, a very comforting knowledge to know that God is always present with us. Today we want to talk about God is holy. God is holy. So I'm going to read, to begin our uh, message today, I will read from Isaiah chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The holiness of God is the attribute that permeates all of his attributes. The holiness of God is an attribute of God that permeates all of his attributes. If there's one attribute that receives preeminence in the Bible, it is the holiness of God. I also want to recommend a book here that's called The Faith of Israel. The Faith of Israel, it was written by H.H. H. Rowley. And uh, one of the best books that I have ever read, The Faith of Israel by H.H. H. Rowley. And in there, he discussed a little bit about the holiness of God. Now, let me ask you this question. How many of you, for example, think that you know me? How many of you think that you know me? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, I see you. Uh, beside my wife and my children, the people who really know me know the most important things about me. Let me repeat it. Beside my wife and my children, and my grandchildren now, I should say, the people who really know me know some things about me. For example, you know the type of food I like to eat. You know my color. What is the color I like the most? You know my favorite team, my favorite club, my favorite sports club, you know that without a doubt. And uh, probably uh, Joe Barrow will pre pre uh, pretend that she doesn't know my favorite team. But I want to remind her that my favorite team is the America's team. Okay, now we got that out. Now, uh, what, what about my favorite book? Beside the Bible, my favorite color, my favorite movie, and, and some of you know it's my cousin Vinny, my favorite uh, a restaurant, my favorite book of the Bible, my favorite uh, uh, whatever it is. You know, if you really know a person, 
you begin to know what is their favorite thing. For people who know me, let me just ask you the question. What do you think when you think about me? Okay, now that you have answered, let me guess what most of you are thinking. Rice. Most of you are thinking rice. My name should have been Emmanuel Olufemi Rice, Akoyo. Okay. I'm saying this to say, if you know God, if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you will understand that what God wishes that his people and his children will know about him is what? His holiness. That God is holy. At this juncture, I was going to play a song that my wife wrote and her team, uh, did you call that team? Her uh, family and friends uh, produced an album and in there they sang, God is holy. So, uh, but since I don't have that, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, uh, say this. The Bible reveals that God is holy. If you read in the Bible, this is one thing about God that you cannot miss. God is holy. What does that mean? Uh, in, the, in the Bible, the word holy simply means set apart. Uh, God is unique. God is set apart. God is on his own level. God is pure. God is light. In other words, if you're looking for purity, if you're looking for moral perfection, you find it in God. But it is more than that, and we will go deeper a little bit into it today. It is more than that, but what I want you to know is that when the Israelites were before God, when, when we talk about the holiness of God, even in the passage that we just read in Isaiah, it was not the power of God that God these seraphs all shook up. It was not the mightiness of God that got them all shook up. You can tell by what they call to themselves, to each other, and to one another, God is holy. Holy, holy, holy. God is holy, and that is his nature. That is just who he is. This is the essence of God. He said of himself, I am holy. The prophet said of him, he is holy. The apostle said of him, he is holy. The angel said of him, he is holy. The seraph said of him, he is holy. We, the people of God, should realize that he is holy. Let me talk about what I'm going to deal with. I'm going to talk about the fact that he is holy in his actions. He is holy in the eternal plan of salvation. He is holy because our moral constitution testifies to it. He has written his laws on our hearts. That's how we know right from wrong. He is holy by influence. In other words, wherever God is, holiness exists. And Moses experienced this. I will look at it. The Holy Spirit is not only, it's not holy only because he is God, but because he is to live in the believer and to give us the capacity to be holy. That's what we call about the transitional. Uh, we, we talk about that which we can be that God is, even though at the full length of what God is. In other words, we can be holy, and we'll deal with that as we get to the passage. So let us look at some of these incredible passages. 
Uh, let me explain to you that what I am saying here is really important for us to get. Because if we don't get it, we cannot live a fruitful and successful Christian life. We must understand the holiness of God and what the holiness of God demands of us. It will revolutionize our praying. It will revolutionize our worship. It will revolutionize our relationship to other people. God is holy. God is holy. So let's look at it. We're going we're gonna to look a little bit into this, okay? So if you follow me, we, we can get this done. Uh, God is holy. That is who God is. If you look, I think I got this. We read Isaiah chapter uh, 6, 1 to 3 already. But if we look at Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 2, chapter 19, I'm sorry. Chapter 19 and verse 2, he said, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy because I, the Lord, your God, I am holy. That is who he is. I am holy. Speak to the children of God. Speak to the assembly. Speak to them all. That they need to be holy because I am holy. Not only that, we're still talking about that is who God is. If you look at Psalm 22 and verse 3, he said, Yet you are enthroned as what? As the Holy One. You are the one Israel pra uh, praises. God is enthroned as the Holy One. He is the Holy One, the whole of Israel. They are to worship Him because He is holy. He is set apart. He is above all. He is on His own. No one can be compared to Him in His holiness. Again, we, we read Isaiah chapter 6 in verse, uh, verses 1 through 3, but let me read it for you again. This is who God is. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraph, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. That's who God is. Not only is God holy, who he is, but his throne is also holy. The throne that he sits on, the throne that he rules from, God is holy. Look at Psalm 47 verse 8. God reigns over the nations. He is reigning over all of the nations. I was uh, correcting one of our members at a Bible study, at a Zoom Bible study. Maybe not correcting is the word, but I was uh, trying to remind the person. I said, you don't mean God is going to reign later on? But God reigns now. God reigns as we speak. He reigns from his throne in holiness. You can see a lot of bad things happen. You can see moral decay and everything. That does not eradicate the holiness and the reign of God. God reigns all the time. God is sovereign all the time. God is omnipotent all the time. God is omnipresent all the time. God is omniscient all the time. God is holy all the time. And there is no time that God is not in control. We may think we are in control. 
The president may think he is in control. The Senate may think they are in control. The Congress may think they are in control. The governor may think he or she is in control. But no, God is just allowing you to do what he wants you to do. And when it is time for you to shut up and to go away, God will make it happen because he rules over all and he reigns over all. That's why we should trust him and trust nobody else. Yeah, that's what Psalm 47 verse 8 says. God reigns over the nations. And God is seated on his holy throne. Amen. God is seated on his holy throne. And on earth, there's nothing that is holy because we pervert it. Governor's power, we pervert it. President's power, we pervert it. Mayor's power, we pervert it. But God cannot be perverted and his throne does not allow any perversion because he, he sits on a holy throne. He reigns from holiness. Not only that, but no one is like God in holiness. No one is like God in holiness. Let's look at Exodus chapter 15 verse 11. Exodus 15, verse 11. Who among the gods is like you? That's a rhetorical question. Who is like you? You are majestic in holiness. You're awesome in glory, working wonders. No one is like God when it comes to holiness. Our holiness is tainted. But God's holiness is pure, separate, above all. 1 Samuel chapter 2. And verse 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 2. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Do, do you understand that? That is the confession of the people of God. People who know God can say, there is no one holy like the Lord. Some of our holiness are fake. God's holiness is the real thing. And there is no one like him. Let's look also at the topic, wherever God is, holiness exists. Wherever God is, holiness exists. And this is really very important for us as we live our lives that we be very sure you know, if you're in a place and there's always moral decay, that means God is not being recognized in there. And that means you need to move away. You need to get away. Amen? That includes when you go to the club to dance. When it is immoral and it's unclean, God is not in it. We used to have a member... Uh, a minister that left our church and founded his own ministry and worked for years for the Southern Baptist Convention. He uh, recently died of COVID-19 uh, uh, virus and he's home with the Lord right now. His name is Reverend Eugene Bryant. And anytime there's any trouble, Reverend Eugene Bryant will say, I ain't in it, and he moves away. If there is moral decay, it's time for you to know God is not in this. I need to move away. I need to get away. I need to get away from it. Look at Psalm, uh, uh, Psalm 48 and verse 1. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God in his holy mountain. Wherever God is, is holy. In fact, I learned this song in college. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. He is Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. Let me, let me forget that now. 
Okay, so the, the point is wherever God is, is holy. And if you are not sensing the holiness and the presence of God, it's time to vamoose. It's time to leave. Even on the mountains, even in nature, wherever you go, God is there. Wherever God is, it's holy. Let me tell you, uh, 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 let me read another passage that you are all familiar with. You remember Moses, he went up onto the mountain to get the laws. And when he was there, there was this uh, uh, presence of God. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, we read this. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. Woo! I just wish we can sense the presence of God even sometimes in our worship places, in our prayer closet. Some of us don't have the reverence for God to know we need to take off our shoes, take off our sandals, because the ground we're standing is holy because God is present there. Amen. When you come before God, the holiness of his presence, you understand this and you express it by doing something worthy. Even when we are praying, understanding that God is there, we get on our knees and we pray like that. We bow down, we prostrate. You know, many times, some of us are just satisfied with just sitting down. You're sitting down before the holy God and you just too common with him. Understand he is holy. Get up on your feet. Get on your knees. Prostrate on the ground because God is there and where God is, is holy. Amen. Not only wherever God is, is holy, but his acts are holy. The acts of God are holy. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just, a faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and just is he. You know, you know a person that doesn't know God when they begin to blame God for all of the evil that's in the world. You know you don't know my God. You know you don't know my holy God. You don't know my perfect God, the God who does no wrong. He is the rock. His works are perfect. Amen. Perfect means 100%. There's nothing left to be accomplished. When God has you, he has perfected you. When God has perfected you, nobody can find fault in you because he has already approved you. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are approved in him. We are saved in him. We are perfected in him. A faithful God who does no wrong. Now, he does allow some things to happen to us. But many times he does it so he can teach us. Let's look at Psalm 145 and verse 17. The Lord is righteous in what? In all his ways. And he is faithful in all he does. Amen. I can trust him. Because he is, I can get on my knees and say, God, I know I am going through this. It may not be what I want, but I know you are a perfect God. I know you're with me. I know you, you'll never do anything wrong. So I put my faith and my trust in you. I put my faith and my trust in you. I remember your servant, Joe. I remember your son, David. I remember even Joseph. I remember how you even allowed Joseph to be sold into slavery in order to save his nation, your people. I know you do everything well. 
That's why Moses said to, that's why Joseph said to his brothers, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God has meant it for good to bring it about that all of God's people should be kept alive as they are today. As you're going through it right now, you may not know what God is doing, but you need to trust God that he knows more than you. He knows more than your father. He knows more than your husband. He knows more than your wife. He knows more than your children. And he is perfecting your way. He is taking you to a higher ground because he is a holy God. He lives on a higher ground. The hymn writer said, higher ground that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Okay, I feel like preaching right now. Let's look at His name is holy. Not only is God holy, that is his essence, that is who he is. God's throne is also holy. No one is like God in holiness. And wherever God is, is holy. His acts are holy. But then his name is also holy. Isaiah 57 verse 15. For this is what the high and exalted one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. Let me read it again. Whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 7. He said, I will make known my holy name among my people Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profaned. And the nations will know that I, the Lord, I am the holy one in Israel. Can you miss that? Can you miss that? Now, just just recognize this. I've only chosen some scripture passages to help us understand the holiness of God. I have not even chosen one-tenth of the passages about the holiness of God. Just look at it. It permeates the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that he is holy. He is holy. God is holy. In whatever we say and do, the the, the, uh, uh, song by Alfreda says, God is holy. God is holy. Let's look at also Psalm 99, verse 3. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. So in our worship services, when we praise God, we should praise him in his holiness. Hallelujah. We should praise him in his holiness. And then you you look in the New Testament in Luke chapter 1, verse 49. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Amen. And then I want us to look at John chapter 17, verse 11. John 17, verse 11. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one. As we are one. And this reminds me the reason why we should never call the Pope Holy Father. Amen. I don't care how many smoke comes out of the out of the chimney when they appoint him. He is not Holy Father. He is just the Pope. Only God is Holy Father. And this is in uh, Jesus' high priestly prayer. He says, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world talking about us. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name. What name? That name that is holy. The name you give me so that they may be one as we are one. God is holy in in everything we do. Amen. Let me read three passages from the book of Revelation to help us understand this mighty holiness of God, this great topic of divine personhood. God is holy. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. 
Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wing, day and night. They never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. What else can I say? Amen. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 10. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. These are the saints crying, holy, holy, holy. And Revelation chapter 15, verse 4. Who will not fear you, Lord? and bring glory to your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. The reason why we worship our great God is because he is holy. We stand before him tremble, because the holiness of God is what reveals to us our sinfulness. The holiness of God is what tells us that we are unclean and we stand before God who is clean. When it happened to Isaiah, the, the, the seraphs had to take tongues of fire and place upon him. And that is why after that he could say, who will go for us and who will do this? And Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. Send me. I want to close with a song that is familiar to all of you. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to quote it. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee casting down their golden crowns along the glassy sea, cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, God everlasting through eternity. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye made blind by sin, thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, love, and purity. God is holy. God is holy. Let us all be reminded of this. Understand our imperfections, but knowing that God has a transitive holiness that he placed upon us, because the holiness of God is what actually demanded salvation. And that is why Jesus bled and died on the cross, so we'll be able to approach the holy throne of God. Thank God Almighty. He died, he paid the price, he tore everything away and made it possible for us to stand before a holy God. Even though we are not perfect, we stand in the perfectness and the holiness of Jesus, the risen Savior. And I thank God that he has made it possible for us to have fellowship with him, even though we are unholy. But as Christians, as Christians, I want to tell you, we ought to strive for holiness. We have to strive. We ought to strive for holiness in everything that we do because we serve a holy God, because we fellowship with a holy God, because that holiness of him permeates all his attributes. He is merciful because he is holy. He is, he is great because he is holy. He is forgiven because he is holy. He is loving because he is holy. He is there for us because he is holy. And nothing can taint, nothing can taint the purity 
and perfect morality of the one who created us, who died for us, and who is living in us. May his name be praised. Amen.